We have already discussed the scanning process and issues management, but I want to take a quick side note to explore agenda setting, because making sure that you have a strong handle on the influence of the media in terms of how people consume information and the world around them is also a part of the decision-making process connected to issues management. So our key objective in this lecture is pretty straightforward. We'll focus on agenda setting as a way to understand the need for effective issues and crisis management. Now, you may be already somewhat familiar with agenda setting. However, it's worth thinking about it in this context more specifically. Overall, what is agenda setting? It's a way of describing the influence of the media. Now, this is most typically researched in the context of traditional media. However, the proliferation of professional blogs that are both connected and not connected to media companies also means that we consume information from across many different platforms. So we really shouldn't get too hung up on the particular platform. But the core of agenda setting theory is that the media has the ability to tell us what issues are important just by their media coverage. So intense media attention increases the importance of certain topics to people, and ultimately this means that the media outlets are telling us what's important for us to know about. This means that there are two levels of agenda setting. When the Ebola outbreak was initially reported in 2015, this was largely how it was framed, but it demanded people's attention. However, as the media began to focus on particular aspects of the story, this is done, for the most part, to adapt the narrative around the stories to what the media outlets think their readers are interested in. One of the core premises in Good News is that it is relevant to people who read the, the papers, the blogs, what have you. So this means is that if you were to pick up headlines, we are beginning to see how Ebola would affect the UK. And if you pick up a paper from around the world, you'd have seen headlines and story framing that was directly connecting the story to the particular location. But why should we care about this? We'll come back to the issues and crisis management reasons shortly, but there are also some broader responsible citizen reasons that we should care as well. Even if we don't open a newspaper or watch the evening news, the reality is that we all consume media of some kind and experience agenda setting. Let's say we hate the news, never watch it, but we do interact with people on social media. So our friends are going to be talking about things. What are they talking about? They're talking about information that they've heard from somewhere and sources that we may not even know about, but that's filtered based on people's interests. Now, this isn't a conspiracy that the media is trying to tell us what to think about. What they're doing is trying to get advertising money. Independent bloggers are trying to get their readership up and so on and so forth. So people are creating content, spins on stories, and focusing on particular parts of stories because they think that's going to get people's attention. Now, even though we're all exposed to agenda setting, it doesn't mean that we can never know anything about people, places, or events that isn't filtered. It just means we have to work a little harder to have well-rounded information. So we have to ask the question, who's likely to be more affected by agenda setting in a more negative way? Now, remember back to our stakeholder relationship management lecture. The relationship between the issue and the stakeholder was important. One of the factors in that relationship was how personally relevant information is. If we believe that an issue or piece of information could affect us, we're much more likely to pay attention, seek more information, but we're also more likely to believe the issue is really important because it gets a lot of media coverage. For example, each year at Christmas, Fox News in the U.S. launches its annual War on Christmas storyline because it's a winner. And at a time of year when political news is often a bit slow, it gets people stirred up. Now, from a more reasonable perspective, is there really a war on Christmas? Of course not. But we live in a pluralistic society in the U.S. where not everyone celebrates Christmas, has alternative holidays, and there's a bit of political correctness in public discussions of it. So the ways that we experience the holiday in a public sense have certainly changed over time. But 
For those with whom it's their holy season, their celebration of it is certainly unimpeded. For those who are really concerned about the attacks on Christian values in the U.S., this story is always going to make it seem like there's a very real, real risk because an outlet is reporting on it that they know and that they trust. And so every time they talk about it year in and year out, it seems like it's even more real over time. The other key factor affecting people's susceptibility to agenda setting effects are those who feel a strong degree of uncertainty. That is people who are anxious with regards to different issues, social and political situations and the like. The greater the degree of uncertainty or fear, the more it is that they're likely to focus on certain topics and issues covered in the media to which they think they're going to be susceptible. A good example of this are stories about online scams. Most of us who are digital natives or at least very comfortable with things like online shopping know that what kind of sites to avoid and generally know how to safeguard ourselves. However, folks like my parents and my in-laws, who are much less certain about what to do in an online shopping environment, are more susceptible to worry about these kinds of stories. In scanning a group of stories, I'm unlikely, I'm pretty unlikely to actually pay any attention to s online scam stories. However, in the same group of stories, my parents would likely notice and pay very close attention to that story. This really is an example of the susceptibility to agenda setting. Now, like many social theories, there are arguments about whether it happens and the degree to which it happens, including from very credible academics like Dennis McQuayle. Let me try to give you some evidence that I think points very strongly to the agenda setting effect in the media. Issues that garner a lot of media coverage are hard to avoid, whether we're talking about migrants, Trump, Brexit, or major events. In 2010, when the BP well exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, for several weeks the BP story was impossible to ignore, garnering something like 30 to 45 percent of the total media coverage of all news stories in the U.S. for about five to six weeks from May to June of 2010. So out of every 10 news stories, three or four were going to be related to BP in some way. Certainly, when you can see an oil spill from outer space, it's going to get some media coverage. But what information were people getting out of it? How were all of the actors, government, BP, its partners, etc., portrayed, or were they even portray portrayed at all? All of these questions are worth asking, but in terms of issues and crisis management, and issues as issues emerge into the public view, the media coverage grows so does the potential for public interest. So one of the reasons that agenda setting is well matched with issues in crisis management is because negative coverage of organizations occupies more of the media share. That means it gets more coverage than good news. If an organization does something great that helps kids, this may or may not get coverage. If, however, an organization causes the injury or death of two kids, you know it's going to be a headline that runs across multiple outlets and probably for multiple days. This particular infographic talks about the 2012 U.S. presidential election, where across most major outlets, negative stories got far more coverage about both candidates compared to positive stories, or even just neutral or informational stories. Finally, agenda setting may not tell what, tell people what to think, but it certainly tells people what to think about. What this bit of data shows is that as the coverage of the economy changes in the media over time, the concern that people report for having the economy healthy also shifts substantially. In the end, because of the propensity for negative stories to spread, the growing access of to information across multiple platforms, and these kind of impacts from agenda setting, from an issues and crisis management perspective, we have to focus considerable attention in the issues management process to what's going on in the news. So when we come back to this slide from the scanning lecture, the reason that we prioritize news sources first, no matter what platform they're on, ranging from traditional to social media, is that they're the ones that are likely to shape the escalation of issues for organizations. 
we look to all all other sources, but only after we have a sense of what's going on and being reported about in the media. For some more information on agenda setting, particularly as it relates to issue and crisis management, here are a few good sources.